Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So as you know, it's important to get between seven and eight hours sleep per night. New research has shown that there is a specific sleeping window that we must fall asleep between, not before and not after, if we want to stave off cardiovascular disease. So enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and look what this new study has got to offer with regard to sleep and cardiovascular disease. This is a review of a study I read that was penned by the European Society of Cardiology where they set out data showing that the time of night we actually go to sleep has a definitive effect on our cardiovascular health and there are links in the description below to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Going to sleep during a specific time window is associated with a lower risk of developing heart disease compared to earlier or later bedtimes. This is according to a study published in European Heart Digital Health, a journal of the European Society of Cardiology. Study author Dr. David Plans, a senior lecturer in organizational neuroscience at the University of Exeter said, the body has a 24 hour internal clock called the circadian rhythm that helps regulate physical and mental functioning. While we cannot conclude causation from our study, the results suggest that early or late bedtimes may be more likely to disrupt the body clock with adverse consequences for cardiovascular health. While numerous analyses have investigated the link between sleep duration and cardiovascular disease, the relationship between sleep timing and sleep disease was until now unexplored. This study examined the association between objectively measured rather than self-reported sleep onset in a large sample of adults. The study included 88,026 individuals from the UK Biobank. They were recruited between 2006 and 2010. The average age was 61 and 58% of the cohort were women. The UK Biobank is a large-scale biomedical database and research resource containing in-depth genetic and health information from over half a million UK participants. The database is regularly updated and is globally accessible to approved researchers undertaking vital research in the most common and life-threatening diseases. Data on sleep onset and waking up times were collected over seven days using a wrist-worn accelerometer and participants also took part in demographic, lifestyle, health and physical assessments and completed some questionnaires. There was then a follow-up for a new diagnosis of cardiovascular disease, which was defined as heart attack, heart failure, chronic heart disease and also stroke. During an average follow-up of 5.7 years, 3,172 participants, that works out at 3.6%, developed cardiovascular disease. The incidence was highest in those with sleep times at either midnight or later, and was lowest in those with sleep onset from between 10 p.m. and 10.59 p.m. Let's look at the confounding factors. The researchers analyzed the association between sleep onset and cardiovascular events after adjusting for the following factors. Age, sex, sleep duration, sleep irregularity, which is defined as varying times of going to sleep and waking up, self-reported chronotype, so are they early birds or night owls, smoking, body mass index, diabetes, blood pressure, blood cholesterol, and socioeconomic status. Let's take a look at the results. Compared to sleep onset for those people who fell asleep between 10 and 10.59, there was a 25% higher risk of cardiovascular disease for those that went to sleep at midnight or later. And there was a 12% greater risk of cardiovascular disease for those who went to sleep between 11 and 11.59. And interestingly, a 24% raised risk of cardiovascular disease for people who fell asleep before 10 p.m. In a further analysis by gender, 
the association with increased cardiovascular risk was strongest in women, with only sleep onset before 10 remaining significant for men. After the study, Dr. David Plan said, our study indicates that the optimal time to go to sleep is a specific point in the body's 24-hour cycle and deviations may be detrimental to health. The riskiest time was after midnight, potentially because it may reduce the likelihood of seeing morning light, which resets the body's clock. Dr. Plans noted that the reason for the observed stronger association between sleep onset and cardiovascular disease in women is unclear. He said it may be there is a sex difference in how the endocrine system responds to a disruption in circadian rhythm. Alternatively, the older age of study participants could be a confounding factor since women's cardiovascular risk increases postmenopause, meaning there may be no difference in the strength of the association between men and women. Dr. Plans concluded by saying, while the findings do not show causality, sleep timing has emerged as a potential cardiac risk factor, independent of other risk factors and sleep characteristics. If our findings are confirmed in other studies, sleep timing and basic sleep hygiene could be a low-cost public health target for lowering the risk of heart disease. Some people might find it hard to sleep before midnight. Here are some tips from the eminent sleep scientist, Dr. Matthew Walker. He says we need darkness to release a hormone called melatonin, and this is to time our sleep and keep our circadian rhythm healthy and balanced. When the sun goes down and the horizon starts turning red and orange, it is a natural trigger that tells our body to get ready for sleep. So blackout curtains and or a sleep mask in the place that you want to sleep would be a good idea. It's also a scientific fact that the brain and the body need to drop their core temperature by around one degree centigrade, which is between two and three degrees Fahrenheit. This is to initiate sleep. That's why it's easier to fall asleep in a room that's cold and not hot. So ideally ensure that your bedroom is cooler than the rest of the house. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Interesting then, as well as the seven to eight hours sleep a night we know we need, we now need to fall asleep between 10 and 11 o'clock. Definitely not after 12 and interestingly, not before 10 p.m. either. I'm normally in bed at 10 o'clock uh, wearing my trusty sleep mask so that I definitely fall asleep between 10 and 11, which is what the study recommends. And that my going to bed at that time is more by luck than by judgment because I've been doing it for a couple of years. Let me know what you think of the presentation. Let me know if the data that I've covered in this presentation may well change now your sleeping habits with um, relation to what time you actually go to bed. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.